Hey y'all, Farmer Jesse here. You know, one of my favorite conversations to have is what is the future of agriculture? I love that conversation. We have it a lot. But one of the conversations we don't have enough is what is the current state of agriculture? Where are we, you know, just generally speaking, where is agriculture? Where are we in conventional agriculture and organic agriculture? So I wanna talk about that today because I just returned from the Acres USA conference. Acres USA is like a magazine, it's been around for a long time. They do a great conference every year. But I just got back from that conference and I, I feel like it's a really good barometer for where we are. And I wanna talk about where we are, kind of in agriculture, and where we seem to be going over the next few years. So let's do it. So the first thing I will say is holy microbials. I was talking to my buddy Yosef. Yosef is a farmer at uh, Ahava Farms, and you'll hear him on the podcast in a couple weeks. We were talking about one of the big things we noticed at the uh, trade show. There's a big trade show there. Wasn't a lot of equipment. There was a little bit. A lot of finger weeders. That's definitely a thing. Uh, but a lot of microbials, a lot of agriculture biological inputs. And these are bacteriums and different uh, mycorrhizal fungi. Lots of different uh, biological things that you would add to your soil to increase your rate of photosynthesis and those sorts of things. Now, this I actually was, I wasn't surprised, but I also was kind of surprised. I wasn't surprised because this is a huge industry. It's gonna be a $14.5 billion industry by 2026. And that's enormous, like that's a, <laughs> Monsanto is really involved in developing these microbials. But it's kind of neat too, right? In some ways, this, 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 these biologicals are an answer to all the chemical agriculture that we've been seeing in conventional agriculture for so long that just isn't working, right? Like if you're spraying fungicides and killing off the bad fungi, but you're also killing off the good fungi, eventually the system is just not gonna work. Fungicides, herbicides, pesticides, nemocytes, like all these things that are, all these sides that are killing all the bio, the biology, uh, it's just eventually not gonna work. Like conventional agriculture is falling apart. So it's really nice to see these microbials sort of making a big cameo at this, at this event. Biology is another huge aspect of this event, of, of acres, and I think it is indicative of where we are, what we're starting to talk about a lot more in agriculture, is the sort of role of biology in farming. And I think this is really neat. I went to several different sessions that literally just talked about how photosynthesis works, taking carbon dioxide, sunlight and water, and, trans and, and you know making that into sugars, and those sugars are feeding biology that's essentially grabbing nutrients and bringing it back to the plant. That's a very basic rundown, but there was a lot of emphasis on that. And I love that the biology is sort of making a comeback uh, in the same way it is in health, um, it is in farming. And it is on a big scale. I mean, Acres is for kind of, or it's kind of geared towards organic farmers, but it's geared towards a lot of bigger growers. And it's also geared a lot towards transitioning growers. So it was really cool to see that. It's just interesting because you see, you can sort of see if you look at the old Acres stuff, the sort of transition from, you know, talking about uh, maybe profitability, or like, and I think I found one in 2006 that talked a little bit more about profitability and those sorts of things. Uh, and then 2010 or 11, I found a conference schedule that talked a little bit more about lifestyle, and that was kind of a big focus of like how to maintain a decent lifestyle as a farmer. But now here we are, and you look at this past schedule, and it's very biologically driven, which I think was kind of cool. Other thing I kind of noticed, and I don't know how I feel about it. There's a lot of tumult uh, sort of surrounding the organic label right now. And what I mean by that is that there was a lot of other, I heard, I sat through at least a couple sessions and parts of sessions that talked about a new label, different labels or add-on label. A lot of feelings about this. I think that we forget often that the label is for the consumer and not for the farmer, so. Sorry, and to clarify, what I mean when I say that we forget it's about the consumer is that we have a lot of labels already kind of out there, you know, natural, certified, naturally grown, and, and it's kind of confusing the consumer a little bit. They're not, I'm finding that they're not exactly sure who to trust anymore. So organic is actually fairly trusted in my experience, especially at the farmer's market, maybe different in a wholesale market. So when it comes to all these add-on labels, I'm a little bit incredulous. 
And I often think of, you know, for my wife and I, we often, at Rough Draft Farmstead, our kind of philosophy is we are the add-on label. We are the label. You know, we have a certified organic label and that brings customers in, but if they have any questions at all, we have a big sign on the front of our table that says, we're proud of the way we grow, ask about our farm values. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure that that's clear, that really what I'm saying is I don't necessarily oppose a new label, I just wanna make sure that it's not making things more confusing for the consumer, because that's already kind of hard. Yeah. Uh, I'm not always on board, but I understand it, and I kind of think it's an interesting thing where there's a lot of tumult surrounding, disappointment surrounding the the organic, the current organic label, as it's starting, you know, the animal welfare fair rules that are already kind of rough with organic are getting worse, and then they just allowed hydroponics into organics, and, and uh, I, you can see that a lot of people are, are kind of, um, there's a word for this, disenchanted with it. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting. And it was definitely something that came up a lot. Uh, you know, there's people trying to start regenerative, regenerative at organic. Uh, real organic is one that Elliot Coleman's working on. Yeah, and again, I, I think that we forget that it's for the customer and what the customer wants. But at the same time, I, yeah, I understand the, I understand why we want so badly to kind of break off from that. So it's interesting. And of course, another big theme, no tillage. Gabe Brown was a speaker, so the, he, that was a big focus of his. Several no-till speakers. Uh, Dan Kittredge was a really great, he did a few, I only got to see one of his seminars, but he did a really, some really cool stuff on not only the biology, but on the, you know, his sort of no-till systems. And there was a, a, a woman named Vale, who di Vale Dixon, who did some stuff on some no-till. And so yeah, you can see that there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, one thing, if the Acres people are watching this, uh, I hope that we can encourage some of these speakers to get really deep into their processes next year. I, I think one of the things I noticed overall in a lot of them, there's a lot, there's still a lot of talk about theory, but I think a lot of us are sold on it. Like we're sold on the idea that you need to do no tillage. For me, I kind of want to hear like literally what equipment are you using? But uh, that's a critique for Acres. That's not really a state of the agriculture thing. But I think that that is something going forward is like when we're sharing these ideas and this is how we run the podcast, it's really great to hear what literally what you do because I may not be able to replicate that exactly, but I can kind of take something from you and take something from somebody else and put those two things together and have a system. So I really like, um, there was still a lot about why no-till, but, there, but there was an increasing amount about how. And I like that, and I hope, that I hope to encourage more of that. There wasn't a lot of talk about automation or um, anything like that. Like, we're not there yet. That is still well in the realm of the future of agriculture. There wasn't any drone people there. There weren't any, um, you know, robot anything. Uh, I think that will come. We're not there yet. So I think that's kind of an interesting observation, uh, especially because we're so focused on the biology. These other tools, I mean, the finger weeder was definitely that was prominent. There were several finger weeder people there. And BCS was there. A lot of people interested in the BCS small walk behind tractors. We have one. I love it. But yeah, there wasn't a lot of that sort of stuff. Like, you know, uh, there weren't any apps there. I was kind of surprised not to see anybody from any apps. Maybe the, if there was an app there, I didn't see it. There was no, uh, you know, farming apps or anything like that, which I thought was kind of curious. Um, and maybe they don't vend. Maybe they just do all their stuff online. But uh, but yeah, Acres represents a really interesting, you know, thermometer or barometer for, for where we are in agriculture. So anyway, I had a lot of fun. It was a great conference. What are you guys seeing? What are you guys seeing in agriculture right now that you were really interested in that uh, isn't really getting a lot of uh, attention? Other than that, uh, like this video. If you like this video, please subscribe. Hit the little bell. And that'll make sure you get our videos. Subscribe to the podcast. You know, do one better. Write a review. Subscribe to the podcast and write a review. That helps us. Uh, the No-Till Market Garden Podcast. If you haven't heard it yet, go check it out. All these people are sharing their stories. It's amazing. And we get deep into the technique. And, I, and I'm going to continue that. And always let me know if you want to hear something or from somebody. I always take recommendations. I can't find them all because I find most of them through like Instagram. So yeah, if you know somebody that's maybe a little bit off the beaten path, let me know. I'd love to interview them. Never forget about the Patreon page. That helps keep these videos and the podcast going um, and helps inspire me to come stand out here in 20 degree weather and do videos. I'm really cold. So with that, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.
you. Do you do this? 